So let me remind you uh, where quantum mechanics came from, why we invented this whole scheme. You know, we started out in the 1600s with classical mechanics. Isaac Newton figured out the way the world worked according to a very simple set of rules. And this set of rules was so good, so compelling, that the idea that classical mechanics was not right just never even entered people's minds. It was a framework in which you could do physics and everything else from you know, electromagnetism to Einstein's theory of general relativity fit into the framework of classical mechanics. Quantum mechanics is something entirely different. It's not an improvement on classical physics, it's a replacement. There was this time in the 1920s and 30s when the greatest physics minds really thought deeply about what it means when quantum mechanical events happen, but then that was that disappeared, that project of trying to really deeply understand what's going on. It was thought to not be serious work. It was, so this should bother you a little bit. It's not your fault if it's bothering you a little bit. You should actually be bothered. Many people are bothered when they're students and they first hear that, and when they ask questions, they are told to shut up. <laughs> and if they keep asking, they're told to leave the field of physics. So I have an idea, it's not my idea, I have a favorite version of quantum mechanics I would like to pitch to you, but much more important than my favorite version is the idea that we should be able to understand it. It's not mystery, it's not magic, it's just science. But the theory alone doesn't tell you what to expect in a measurement. For this, you also have to take into account how the experiment is set up. For example, what beam and what luminosity, and how the detector works and how sensitive it is. This together, theory, setup, detector, gives you an expectation for your measurement. What you are then looking for are deviations from that expectation. Such deviations would be evidence for something new. Exactly because you have an equation and the equation is unambiguous in what it says happens, you can say the Schrodinger equation should apply. If you're saying that quantum mechanics is a fundamental replacement for classical mechanics, you can use this equation to make all sorts of predictions. Here's a kind of quantum mechanical phenomenon. A, a, a nucleus of an atom might be unstable. Right? It decays. And when it decays, it might emit an electron or another charged particle, and the Schrodinger equation will predict how that electron gets emitted. Remember, the electron is a wave. The way it gets emitted will look more or less like these. It'll be like some big spherical cloud that moves away from the radioactive particles. Here's what it actually looks like. This is a real picture of a little bit of uranium in a cloud chamber that is emitting radioactive particles, and when the charged particle moves through the chamber, it excites the atoms around it and they leave a little track, okay? So these little trajectories represent particles being emitted from the radioactive substance. What you immediately see is that they're all straight lines. They're trajectories. It's as if a particle has moved through once it was emitted from the radioactive substance. That is not what is predicted by the Schrodinger equation. The Schrodinger equation says there should be a wave, big puffy thing going out in all directions. What you see when you look at it is as if the electron looks like a particle. So it's almost as if the electron is kind of like a wave when you're not looking at it. But it's a particle when you look at it. Be evidence for something new. So this should bother you a little bit. It's not your fault if it's bothering you a little bit. You should actually be bothered. Many people are bothered when they're students and they first hear this. And when they ask questions, they are told to shut up. <laughs> and if they keep asking, they're told to leave the field of physics. Okay? These are the rules of quantum mechanics as we currently teach them. Here they are in a little bit more formal form. This is what we teach our students. I'm not making this up. I will not at the end say, ha ha ha, those 20, 1920s physicists just weren't that smart. Uh, this is still what we teach our students today. There are two sets of rules for quantum mechanics. The first set of rules apply to quantum systems when you're not looking at them. And they say there's something called the quantum state of the particle which we call the wave function. And there's an equation that exactly governs what the wave function actually does in time. This is precisely parallel to classical mechanics. There's a state, and there's a set of equations that tell you how they evolve. But classical mechanics stops there. Quantum mechanics has a whole new set of rules for what happens when you look. When you look, the wave function changes. Suddenly, it collapses to a particular value, collapse of the wave function, and you don't know where it's going to collapse to. All you can do is say the probability. And this is what we teach people in textbooks. So this should bother you a little bit. It's not your fault if it's bothering you a little bit. You should actually be bothered. Many people are bothered when they're students and they first hear this, and when they ask questions, they are told to shut up. <laughs> and if they keep asking, they're told to leave the field of physics. And 1984 was quite a year, because also supersymmetry was observed and then disappeared again. This should bother you a little bit to leave the field of physics. If fluctuations create a signature like what you are looking for one in 20 times, then the confidence level is 95%. If fluctuations created one in a hundred times, the confidence level is 99%, and so on. Since the mid-1990s, particle physicists have used for discovery a confidence level of 99.99994%. That's about a one in a million chance for the signal to have been a random fluctuation. It's also frequently referred to as five sigma, where sigma is one standard deviation. These smaller particles are often called prions. They were found in 1996. The New York Times reported, 
tiniest nuclear building block may not be the quark. The significance of the signal was about three sigma. That's about a one in a thousand chance for it to be coincidence and about the same as the current B meson anomaly. But the supposed quark substructure was a statistical fluctuation. You should actually be bothered. Many people are bothered. Then, in 2003, supersymmetry was discovered again. This time in form of a supposed spottom quark, that's the hypothetical supersymmetric partner particle of the bottom quark. That signal too was at about 3 sigma, but then disappeared. And in 2015, we saw the diphoton anomaly that made it above 4 sigma and disappeared again. There have even been some 6 sigma signals that disappeared again, though these had no known interpretation in terms of new physics. For example, in 1998, the Tevatron at Fermilab measured some events they dubbed superjets at 6 sigma. They were never seen again. In 2004, Hera at Daisy saw pentaquarks that are particles made of five quarks with six sigma significance, but that signal also disappeared. To leave the field of physics. So the path to leadership should not be uh, through, um, you know, basically MBA business school situation. It's it's like it should be kind of work your way up, do useful things, and. Um, you know, and, and there's, there's a bit too much of the, somebody goes to a high profile MBA school and then kind of parachutes in as the, yeah. as the leader, but they don't actually know how things work. Um, they, they, you know, they could be good at say PowerPoint presentations or something like that, um, and they can present well, but they don't actually know how things work because they do not, um, you know, they're, 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 they 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 instead of like working the way out. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they, just, they never went through a, an apprenticeship. Or, yeah, like there's better work. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, they're, they're they're kind of like just not aware of what, what's really needed for uh, you know to make to make great products. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to trash MBAs too much here, and I, I so. Uh, but I, I think it's just a little bit too much. Like, yeah, like people look at MBA school as like I, I want to parachute into being the boss instead of earning it, and like I don't think that's that's good. Yeah. Like, yeah.